Hello everyone. So welcome to our next video on the next project in our SAP UI5 for beginner series 10 projects. And uh, I think for now till uh, the first five projects we have been uh, you know primarily working with the JSON model and all right. And uh, I thought of maybe you know exploring uh, why don't we bring in data and as has been you know requested in one of the feedback that maybe we can record a, another project which involves low data along with few other controls. So that is a very high level plan which we will we'll try to cover in this uh, uh, project. So what we will explore is one is a very important topic which we have not uh, explored so far, which is uh, SAP UI5 uh, XML fragments, right? So fragments uh, is something which we'll, we'll work on. So maybe let me first uh, get on to what are fragments, right? So I am going to a typical SAP UI5 help and library, right? So if you look at this, this fragment is a part of our SAP UI core namespace, right? So for people who are coming from um, a web background or JavaScript or you know whichever world. So for example, we have those functions in a web we have function modules. Those are like reuse kind of a stuff or we have classes, methods which we can use, right? So same way, why can't we reuse the views? For example, uh, there is a purchase order header and there are items and then there is another view where you are showing something else, but you need purchase order items also. So, so this purchase order items become a common view, right? So how do you share these steps? So what we do is what SAP F5 have is is uh, something called as fragments, which is like uh, you can um, call those fragments and integrate into your views. Okay, so we will try to somehow explore these fragments, right? That how they are made and what, right? And then along with it, we will try to use our ES5 gateway, right? ES5 is a gateway demo system, right? which is free for all you can register. I'll provide the link in the description of the video or to the tutorial of how you register for it. And we would see, we'll try, we'll try to see if we can consume those ES5 OData gateway services from our UI5 local tooling via Visual Key or NPS code. So that 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 is possible and that that we will try to use to it via proxy. We'll see as we start making the project. So primarily we'll be covering uh, uh, this fragments concept. Then we'll be covering uh, bringing in the auditor services. And um, then we will be also talking about uh, uh, using value help dialogue also. So we'll, we'll have something like uh, the search criteria and then using those fragments to show the details, right? Of course, we'll on the way we will explore a few other controls. So that's what we'll plan to do in this project. So uh, I think it makes sense to cover all the steps, right? So for our project, uh, we need a RSP gateway access. So what you can do is uh, we have uh, this tutorials on developer.sap.com and uh, if you go to search for this it's a big gateway demo system you'll see the steps that okay you need to go to this and fill the forms and then it shows you all the steps, and then you're all done okay so make sure you have created this account and once you have created this account so all you need to do is just log in because i've already logged in earlier so it it, it, it opens your typical sap um, gateways you know easy access screen menu right and you, you will not have much of an access here, but uh, what you can do is there are services which are already activated, for example, uh, which is uh, ES5 GW sample underscore basic. Okay, so so we, what we would do is we would uh, uh, we would try to consume this um, O data services uh, in our app, which will have XML, which will have those fragments value help dialogues and other different things. So if you look at this uh, endpoint, which is I have loaded with it 
with metadata. So it shows about what are the details of the service, right? What does it contain? It contains a entity name, business partner, product, and uh, sales order, sales order item, and all, right? And for example, if you want to see, for example, uh, sales order item, let's just want, let's say I want to see business partners. Okay, what business partner is this? So all I need to do is give it set name it is business partner set and uh, i need to press enter oh there are too many right so what 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 we can do is we can add an option one is i need this output in json format and uh, then i need only top 10 rows nothing more right so yes this is better so what we see is Business partners, business partner 1000, company name SAP, so and so. And then it also has its relations also that, okay, this partner has these sales orders, right? If you want to see the relationship, it will show all the sales order of this business partner. Let's just open it if it has any. Yes, it has few, not few, it has many sales orders. These sales orders are sales order ID, name, and all that stuff, right? And similarly, it has link to uh, context. It is typically like in our database tables, we have uh, we create foreign key constraint, we create relationships. The same way here also, you create associations between two entities. For example, you have sales order headers. It will be associated to items, and uh, you know another master data also will be a separate entity which will be connected to the transactional data. So that's a very um, kind of a. Uh, 10 second overview of how these end things work, right? For us, it is just an endpoint and API, which we need to consume it. How it is developed in SAP in our gateway system is another course in itself, which we might start sooner or later tomorrow or tomorrow when. And along with, we we'll, might have something like uh, related to OData and uh, we will have uh, a separate series. And in case you're interested, we have SAP Stamtish, which is coming on 20th of uh, February this month, where um, one of our member is talking about introduction to our data. So very important session for everyone to understand. So going from okay, so so moving forward, so we have our endpoint, right? And uh, we have this. What is pending is where is the project? Like uh, okay, what we can have is uh, something like uh, mm, uh, a filter, okay? Uh, where we'll have a search criteria, filter criteria. For example, uh, let's keep business partners, right, or product, right? And maybe let's just keep business partner. Otherwise, because if we are done for business partner, we're done for uh, product also. So let's just quickly, uh, for this business partner, this is these are the sales order, right? For another business partner, different sales order, right? So what we can do is let this be a sales order app, right? And based on whatever business partner we have selected, it will load the the, the corresponding sales orders uh, in in, uh, in in the table list, right? Okay. So what we will explore here is that one is once we are searching for a business partner using value help dialog, you can have a range, you can have different options. So we'll use that and we'll we'll bind the value help dialog to the business partners. Okay. That means we'll fetching the data from the business partner master list, displaying it in our search help. And once that is done, we will then display the list. Okay, so then how do we use the fragment, right? So what we'll have is we'll have a button also on the top of the table, which is what we can call it as something like a edit or toggle. So, so for example, if you'll have simple sales order list being loaded, it will be in a display mode by default. That will be coming from one fragment, right? Now, in case you press that button, so now automatically you'll have everything, the table whole become a table and how? Through another fragment. So we will learn now fragments, we'll learn how to make it editable, we'll learn value help, value help dialogues, and during value help dialogues, we'll also learn about fragments. So, so let's just call it as a sales order, basic sales order app, but using different controls. Okay, so what do we next then? Of course, what we'll do is 
we will start it right we'll still we'll start with our basic project creation which is where we use a easy ui5 templates right and uh, let us just call it com let's just call it as a more data sales order okay search search and it should be com.te namespace which is our technology and their static web server which is okay view that xml let's call it just as a main view let it be in a simple yes very good so the first place is in progress you can see it is a by default created a single page that is what all we need right but what we need is along with this is uh, we'll be exploring another one of the local tooling ui5 module which is uh, known as uh, proxy right so let's see what it does is basically because it will be running right now in a local host right and uh, we are trying to consume the data which is from what namespace it is from this this name so this is like a different origin right so how do we do it is we use a module name proxy what it does is it's i think it runs a background um, that background local express server thing and then you send the request to that local host but internally that request is getting um, is is routed to this uh, our es5 endpoint so we will explore that also in this. I think, uh, is it all done? Yeah, it is done. So maybe let me just clear it. Uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, I'm just trying to uh, run the app. And then we will start with all other stuff. Start. Okay, so our app is I think ready. It is running with our data sales order search, perfect blank page, which is expected, right? And uh, and uh, just good, I think. Okay, so so what we will do is we'll first make it as a, a simple app, and then slowly bring in the fragments. Okay, so maybe what I will do is I'll we will not waste much of our time. We go to samples. I will write filter. Okay. And uh, we can use filter bar with basic search. Yeah, this is this kind of search which we need. So what I will do is, and this is coming from this namespace, right? Let me make it big. Yes. So filter bar is something which is which we'll use for our uh, uh, and entering the business partner. Once you put that business partner, it will sit, get you everything in a table, detail, right? But then this is where we'll start making it more complex. We'll add a value help here, or we will first have a fragment bring in in the, the table level, and then we will change it here, okay? So, so uh this filter bar is in uh, fp namespace maybe let me first bring uh, this here and uh, then uh, what i will do is i will bring in first everything and then we will see how how do we do it 
because rather than having just one field as a filter i will I like to have two three fields such as if you look here in the sales order item sales order header you see billing status and delivery status right so we'll have this also as a filter criteria so there will be three fields right and uh, so what i will do is uh, we don't need a date picker we need an input data and we don't need a combo box we again need an input data right and we need three filters okay so i'll add here another one right and if you look here these are the fields part of the current variant attribute is true meaning it will be shown and visible in filter bar it should be shown there also so that's what is true for them and for the others right for the others such as company customer these flags are not set so what does it mean it means is if we go here these are not available here but if we click here they are available here and if i just click on this I'll do an okay then those are also available right so what we will do is we will remove the other one which is uh, these one i don't need because all i need is first is a business partner and then i need is a delivery status and what else is this this is billing status right so we will have it as billing status right and i will remove the other stuff which is not using right so let's just quickly see so we have a filter bar defined in which we have first item as business partner second as delivery status third as billing status i will show you how we do use it is let me just look at the front end mm, i go to okay bad thing uh, so because we have not added this uh, comp here right so what we need to do here i will add uh, this thing in our name space uh -huh. If I need to give the path also. So I say dot slash UI module slash UI5 dot So this is added and uh, now I need to do a UI5 serve. Uh, if I will config, okay, I've decided, and uh, let's do a refresh on it. So, I'm missing something. No, it doesn't look sick. Um, Duplicate ID internal iPhone BR. Okay, when you copy paste, you tend to make mistakes. So the name is generated in this. So we can have this delivery status, billing status as a drop down also. You'll see, we will either choose one of them as a drop down, but I think we are good, right? And uh, why um, it is uh, coming as a uh, uh, Monday tree uh, because you have Monday tree as two, right? I'll just remove these because as of now I don't need this. Okay, you can move it here and close this. Okay, close this. Close this. We are good, right? So the moment you press go, it shall uh, whatever is the selection criteria, it shall bring in the uh, bring in the the data result set, right? So now maybe what we will do is for the timing, let's uh, let's add a table also there, okay? And table also we will start by as always make it big. I go here. Uh, I will look at uh, responsive table. Yes, 
and we will just have this kind of a table and uh, I will this table ID. As of now, I'm just copying this because you have already covered this, so I'm just copying it as it is, right? So that at least it become visible. And then we will change the column name and binding accordingly. Okay, so let me just see what is the problem. Uh, there is some issue with my XML. Okay, what is the issue? Is why we am using something which is not defined in my namespace. Uh, to start, I have the score is not defined, right? I don't need a toolbar also. So, what I will do is I will remove these toolbars, right? We'll have just a simple table, columns, and that's it. So, we are should be good now. Yes. Let's just first uh, look at uh, this. So we'll have a sales order ID. Okay. So we'll say sales order ID. Okay. And uh, let me add it so that I remember it. The so next, maybe we can have uh, the uh, customer ID, right? Because that is what our business partner is. So we will have something like customer ID. So customer ID. Mm -hmm. and then uh, let's add a billing status also because that makes sense. Uh, um, billing status. Right, and uh, what else you need? You need is a packing status also, delivery status, delivery status, and maybe then I will add customer name as the last one. Delivery status, and then maybe customer name. So we have five, right? So six. So we'll have six customer ID. So billing status will come something like here. Delivery status become. I'll remove the other irrelevant. Don't worry. So let's not have it like this. Well, let's just keep it text. I know it makes sense. One, two. So after billing status, I have. Delivery status and customer name. I don't need these extra fields. So removing them and binding wise as of now, title is let's have it as this and let's not have a let's keep both of it. So we have five column. This is how it is and we should see that. So this looks okay, right? Now, the first thing is we'll get the data, right? And uh, then we will bring in something else, okay? So on search, we have on search, and uh, I will open this, open our main controller. We will have on search function on search right and let's define our uh, basic hook methods whenever the tab is loaded what i want is maybe um, we can um, there is one way is we can let's give it an id okay so if its id is for example bp Right, and uh, for next, I will give it as a DS is status. 
let's make it as this part now okay and next as a next as a billing status right so we'll have it as um bill status okay so we have the things in place now and uh, now what is important is that once we read these values we need to consume this endpoint right now since our app is running in a local host and this is running here on a different url so it's like a cross origin request so how do we manage it so that's where uh, we have something called as a npm ui5 proxy okay and uh, it's a it's a it's a middleware proxy which we'll use and uh, then then you will see that we can uh, give to it our uh, base url for example in this case it is uh, gateway simple basic right and uh, then we can refer it to as by a slash or it or whatever name you might path you give it then you can pass provide the username password if you don't provide this you can uh, kind of um, it will give you a pop-up and then you can log on right so that's how we will do right and uh, let me then uh, i just go back and go to my system so let me open this controls control H -E, yes ALS. so what we will do is maybe uh, let me uh, close all of these and uh, let's have here proxy, right? And we can have this here. And now we can have, now we can install this middleware proxy and we'll save it as a dev dependency because it is for development only you will use this because when actually you will deploy it you will use something else right we'll be directly calling because it will be deployed on a gateway so we'll be using that but it is for our local development we are using a proxy and if you just look here in the package.json you see this there is a simple proxy this live reload is also there which is reloading as soon as it is saved and you can see this there's a ui5 dependency ui5 middleware reload right this is a ui5 dependency right i will need to add it here so let me just open it here and then you need to add this in a ui5 dependency also so what i will do is i'll do a comma so it is also now added right and then it says this you go to ui5.yml okay our yml is here and in here we have this one right so we will add another one and uh, the indentation is a big uh, is something which we need to look at okay so i will what i will do is okay now this is okay after middleware and uh, so this is as of now this is a kind of a, a dummy username password we can simply have it as as let's just uh, we will maybe let me get the credentials and uh, I don't want to hard code it, right? So we'll remove this, okay? And uh, we will so let me copy this URL and uh, we'll paste it here. So this is a base URL we need. Just we can remove. Okay. 
and uh, path should be slash over it as slash mount path. That is the URL which we'll refer to. Now, now I think we shall create the data model, right? So before that, what I will do is I will define the data source here. So I will say that my data source is ES5. You have to refer to this URI and then and, and this URI is internally referring to this URI. OK, so we have defined the path. OK, next is uh, we need to define the model. So model is here. So what I will do is let me bring in the model. So we have a default model and where we say you reload it, right? You just press save, right? And maybe uh, let me, okay, we have not run it. So I will say you have right served. So let's just quickly get with our, because we need to implement a call to sales orders with the filters, right? So for that, what we need is uh, use two classes, uh, which are uh, filter and filter operator. I will add the reference also here because we need to pass those filter values, right? So what's okay. So I'll add it as a synchronous module dependency that OK, I need to use these classes methods, right? And uh, then what we will do at the first place is uh, once you click on uh, go, right? So it shall. So once you click on go, if you look at this, we have added uh, on search button here, right? Once you click on search. So what I'm doing is since it is a default model with no particular name in our manifest.json blank one, we are using by default did not pass the name here and we are creating an array. Then I'm reading those filter values. With here I'm reading those filter values, right? And by default, I'm assuming they are EQ, right? We'll write as of now it is EQ, but once I introduce a value help dialog, then we will have to modify this part. We'll see. The first important is to get this thing up and running. So you see this, we are fetching the sales order table reference, and here I'm build my query filter, right? Now there is a there is a in case you need to you know bind your uh, table to the data or data. There are two three ways, right? One way is you directly create a or model dot read call and then you create a local dot json model or something right on top of your table another is you can um, use this uh, directly you can use this uh, one second is uh, is a uh, bind aggregation method okay and what i am doing is that I have used, I have first this reference, ID product table is the ID which we have copied it, right? We, cannot, we can correct it, but it's okay. Important is to understand that we are using bind agreements. First, we are setting the model that, okay, this is a default model on which is to be set on the table. Then I'm saying there is bind aggregation. What do you bind? You bind items. To what path? Sales order set, right? The sales order set is uh, something, uh, There's something which you can see here sales order set, right? So we are using that, right? And uh, then, and uh, and then I'm saying that this path with this query filters, right? Because the base path refers to uh, our uh, this URL, right? And then I'm adding a uh, another path which is slash is order set and then I'm saying then you this is important template 
template is basically you define how does your table like is. So where have you defined? We have defined it here. The whole structure that okay it will contain so and so things. So what I will do is I'll give it a ID. What ID we have there? Sales. So I say sales. Okay. So now we have a define the ID. Then we are passing table. Then I'm seeing just at the top ten reports, not as right. So as of now we have our filter. We are using our filter class and filter operator. Both classes methods we are using right to create an instance and then pushing it to an array, right? And we we want it to be an AND clause. This and this and this. I can add if and all. You can fine tune it, but it is for reference, right? And I think we are good. So if I now uh, go to our uh, go data sales search once again, and uh, let me find some. Okay, let's just search this. And then delivery status is D and billing status is D. Just note that I'm just fetching the top 10. This is top and skip. You can fetch the how much how many elements you want, or you can use those pagination also. I'm just using top 10 in interest of the performance, right? So I just say go and yeah, so very good. So we have the data, right? And now you can see we are getting this uh, top whatever is the uh, how many are there we are getting those right. And uh, if you go here in uh, network, you can see this is uh, the result which has come. By default, it is showing five because uh, there's a top five, right? But you can change that. We'll do that later. But as of now, the data is coming, which is good, right? And uh, then is next is what do we need to do. Uh, one we can have it as a description also, but that's okay. That's okay because you can have a description lifestyle status, life cycle status, but it's okay. It's showing the records, which is fine. So now that's where now our real work starts. So what I want is that now let's imagine this part is reusable. So can we move it into another fragment, which is a reusable view, which I can call it as and when needed. OK, so let's try that. So so let's create a, not one, we'll create two fragment. One is uh, we'll call it as a, a items dot fragment dot XML. So this is the this is the syntax which you have to use because this is uh, this is what is understood by our framework, right? Here we'll have uh, the tables, right? Let's keep our tables here, and let's have uh, one new one which we will call it as for filter the header area, filter dot fragment dot XML. Okay. So now what we will have in our uh, uh, items is our table, right? So maybe. Let's just let me just bring in the table. Okay, so if you look at this, only thing which is different is that it has, apart from view, it has core fragment definition, right? It otherwise it was a view, right? Now it is a de fragment definition which has a table. Rest of the things all same, right? And same in similar way, let's uh, let's get uh, filters also, right? And uh, we will have filters here. Okay, so filters is also the same except this thing, right? And what we have done is in our main, instead of I removed all the code and we have added one a vertical layout with an ID inside this page. Okay, nothing fancy. All we are trying to do is that let's imagine this filter is a separate view. It can be reused by another view, right? or items is another view which can be used across the whole table navigation. So that's why we created them as fragments, right? Now, how do we call a fragment, right? So because in our case, it is just a, a direct call, right? We are not, uh, you know, calling it based on condition, but we could have if we want. So all I need to do is that in our init method, we want whenever this application load, we want that we create this new segment I part provided here the path. One is items, another is filter, and and then I am passing here the reference also. So this, so when I say comma this, 
it basically bind this controller to this fragment and uh, and because a fragment doesn't have any controller of its own it automatically whoever creates it it basically takes the you know it takes this reference because if i remove this right i just say you give me this fragment right i just have an egg fragment and then i say from the current view you read by id main where is the main defined uh, we have defined a vertical layout with id main why vertical we want first filter and then beneath it we want uh, something like uh, tables otherwise i would have got a horizontal if we want something in parallel so i say that okay read this id then you insert content what content header fragment and filter fragment right and this header is actually items and filter is uh, so it's, the name is different but uh, <laughs> otherwise it means the same thing okay so i just press save and now if we go and uh, just uh, see so now see still the things are being loaded right there is nothing fancy everything is loaded right and if we let's say um, search for this d and p and if i just press control shift i and i open source and on search right and uh, remember this that i have removed comma this there is no reference to the controller right so let's see what happens so control doesn't go here you remember why because this fragments doesn't know who their parent is who is instantiating them so that's why we need to give it a reference that comma this that this refers to this controller and here also okay and now once this thing reload we will see how it goes okay so maybe uh let's just uh, keep it uh, i will open this another tab so if i now for example if i say 1000 delivery status t and p and if i press go you see it is going here right and rest all is same we are reading by view the id and everything and it automatically will fetch the data and everything let me just quickly so so the data is here another thing which i would like you to learn is that because if you look at this table right and uh, let me try to the uh, table you see this id it has an id not id product table it has something else also id app control list ul and all how does it generate set right so so what is important is that in the when while instantiating this fragment i have also passed this view id because if i will not pass this view id then the names of this fragments will be different automatically generated and the same code where we are reading by id by product table or we are getting this filter value by id it will not work because those will be generic now bringing this thing it basically adds a uh, adds a prefix also to the name so how let's just maybe in the interest of understanding let's just uh, put a breakpoint here okay and do a reload and if i just say let it come there so it has come here so now if i just say this you see this id app control right it automatically will prefix that stuff so now let's just let it reload and we will see what is the id we have got so if i just click here and uh, i go here table so table id is let me just put it here and make it bit bigger for you right you see this container odata sales id app control hyphen hyphen this so it is able to automatically this hyphen hyphen is also appended by this framework and it is able to read it now let me just um, remove this okay so still the fragment will be created right but what id we will see i let it create everything is created right and if i look at here and if i try to read this table now you see this id right and so once now if we go here and i say go now our same code 
will not work why because this using this method it is expecting something like this right but actually it is only this much so that's why it is very important that we pass if you are using those ids it is very important to pass this view id so that it is automatically fixed prefixed by the framework so what we have done so far let's just quickly stop here because one part of very important thing we have covered is fragments that fragments what are they how they are used and what is the use of them right and and then how do we pass the parent controller uh, by how do we bind the controller to it or how do we generate the ids right now that is one part which we wanted to cover right now the next part is uh, which is very important is uh, we wanted to give here the help search help value help what do we call it right so let me just bring it here i will close this right and we want we don't want the such a simple we want something like a f4 help here f4 help here f4 help. how do we do it let's so the first step as always is go to sap ui5 standard help uh, go to samples and we will say value help dialog why i wanted to do fragment first and this search help in second is because this value help dialog uses the concept of fragments so now you will understand since you have now understood what are fragments we will now try to explore it right so how do we want it so we want uh, do we want something like this so this is a basic one and uh, and if you look at it uh, this is uh, coming from a json we will not use json we will use uh, our raw data services as requested by one of the person right and uh, let's see how this is so this is like you can select one any one you can choose i think this makes sense to us we'll try to use this okay and uh, hmm. Uh, and this one is uh, this one is uh, just a uh, kind of a range, so we don't need this because it is not using raw data. I'm trying to see this one. This is range because this multiple selection we've already covered one selection, so maybe um, we will use. Let's try to use one is single select where we will select the single thing, right, and then. Um, then that we will use for our business partner and then we will see whether you use the same or not so how let's see how this sample is okay so in this it is getting product id product name what we will do is we will have something like uh, business partner what was that business partner set uh, we need uh, question mark dollar uh, format json and top 10 yes we need only the top 10 business partner sets to be shown right okay very good so we have them so this is the results and so this is this kind of detail we want it is like in, in this f4 help we'll have business partner id product name and category but what we will use is we will use business partner id company name and maybe uh, phone number, right and then that's how we will try to do it so how do we do it is as follow uh, we close this and we click here so let's just look at how it is done so it says input id is input then it says show value help true that's how it basically sets it's a parameter which still, which which basically gives this f4 help okay and then it says once if your value help is requested that means once you press that help button this method is call and then it also has suggestion items also which is through path to this and then it is basically like a core item key product id name and stuff right and uh, right so name product id and all and then i go here on value help request so what does it do is you see here it is nothing but a fragment right and let's see what this fragment has it has a value help dialog and what does else it has it has ok button cancel button after close support multiple select 
that's how it will only select if we set it to false only one record is selected then it passed the key and this okay which is fine and, uh, and then it says then it is reading the basically setting the model right and it is binding it and then once you say on value help requested it opens it and once you click on those button ok and cancel it closes them right and gets the keys also so we'll use the same concept so maybe uh, let's first uh, let's first modify maybe I'll, I'll do it this way and this way it will be then make more sense so we go to filter bar and our filter bar has an input id business partner we say show value help true value help only that we that we can't import it okay it is okay and on value help requested let's just copy this right and uh, okay and uh, let's add this also maybe because this is what it will show we will we'll adjust it i'm just trying to bring in the stuff okay and uh, then maybe we create a fragment one more fragment uh, we say help dot this is business partner help right bp help dot frag fragment dot xml and uh, we copy this and uh, what else we are using here is a title let it be business partners right let others remain and key should be what is the key here for us key is business partner id right and uh, then uh, in our here also let's have uh, collection is uh, business partner set right and uh, product id no we want just business id company name and then uh, he is again business but display should be it should display something like uh, uh, this description and then it's code right and so this is this this our our first fragment is corrected this is also right help is also right and uh, only thing which is pending is uh, is our controller so now we will the the views the fragments are adjusted let's just bring in the value helps and it looks let's just quickly analyze it so somewhere it is defining what all columns this will have so here it is okay it is there in some column model so json let me just download it and then maybe i will open it okay yeah so this is where it is defining what column that will have which is okay and uh, then it is uh, uh, taking its reference as a model and then there is a this is a json model for products which will not use will use our business partner set from odata es5 gateway and uh, so it, it is reading those columns here then creating the fragment which is okay then it, this is here which is, it is setting the tables data there is one place is for setting the model another is for setting the columns what columns my table will have then it is binding the rows and then basically the the creating those column templates right this is why it has this map function that okay what will be the label of each column and then it has update and then it basically opens it so uh, we'll we'll talk about this token right that how, how it works we'll see it in debug mode but for now just understand this that we need to have something like a model we will have a model but we'll not create it from a file because we have already done many times what we will do is we will uh, we will do it in our uh, let me go to our controller what we will do is we will do it here that one is this is having a reference to our business partner id and this is where we have defined that okay my first column will be uh, label will be business uh, 
partner business id business partner id and this will be my company name why do we need it is if you remember while binding the data from our o data call to the to this you know table model we need to provide the template that's why we have to define the columns and this is our email address so we want only three fields a uh, business partner id company name and email address then i am just creating a json model and holding the reference here simple right now let's just bring in our value help right and uh, so value help is here let's just quickly check it i don't need this right i can replace it by uh, because i've already set this column model here i say this dot o call model that water column model is created you read its data which is this one and inside it you reference the column so this has now these details which is perfect then i say you create a value help dialog again we are passing the um, the our uh, reference to the to the controller and then i am adding it as a dependent right and then i say that okay you bind rows to my business partner set for each item we are binding the aggregation right that okay this is an item and for each item this is a column name column dot template which is nothing but this values right and then we are just uh, opening it this token for the timing let us just hold on to it okay very good so now our 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 dialog is open but what is pending is the closures so what we'll say is on value help okay press we'll just bring this here this is the beauty of this help right you can use this code as a reference and then um you can adapt it as per your need so for example now we say that once you press okay you read the tokens and you close it right and then this will, will come hold on and then this is close and cancel and all right so just press save let me just quickly show you my filter again so i'm saying business partner business partner set input id path sorter is sorted by business partner id whatever you see once we select something is coming from here core item key is business partner id company name business partner id this is coming in bracket right so now let's just uh, look at our stuff okay we have this if i just press this uh ah okay good so we have got this is coming from where this is coming from our uh here the the o data call right and even i can validate it it is if you go to network you will see there is a batch request using which there is a response and in response you can see those business partner details are coming right the whatever is city and all that stuff right and now if you for example just select one it automatically populates here so let's just quickly debug it okay because th this is something which we should cover so well let's say i select something right i go here uh, let it come i choose 1002 let's see now we'll see what this token does is so if you go here and look at this token right uh it is nothing but it has giving us a reference right and uh, inside it if you look at here right it has a properties that okay this is a property right this is what 1002 i have selected and rest all details are there right and uh, if you just get it key so let's just see what is there in this key right so this has this key right and what it is doing is it is selecting that input key that okay this is a key right and that's that's why so so, so that's how it works so now we see that how do we have this tables right and uh, this is by our data and now we can you know if we want we can add our filters right for example you have filter here uh, we'll not be doing it let's just quickly check it here that uh, how does it happen is one in place of input it has multiple inputs because you can add multiple choose multiple items and in fragments if you look at our code right so we just have a blank one right here it's simply we are adding it at runtime the table 
but if you look at uh, here it is also adding those filter bars that okay whatever filter bars you want these one right these are coming so what we will do is that rather because this we can any day build on it we will we'll explore another part of it which is a, a condition kind of a tab so you get you know many times you need to provide a condition that okay or ranges the select option typical so that also we need right so maybe what we can do is we can have this in our um, what do we say in our delivery status or packing status right so how do we do it is let's just see that okay for this it is using um, what it is using is a multi input right so what i will do is uh, let's just use this multi input and we copy this right and uh, then we go to this place um, not this we go to this and we say instead of input i need multi input right and uh, uh, mm -hmm. copy it again so we say we need a multi input it is a uh, del status right and uh, on value help requested is again the same but this time we say it is del right and uh, but in this case let's just look at the fragment the fragment has uh, uh, apart from title okay cancel after post key uh, description it has support range is true and support range only also as true right so what we can do is we let's create a new fragment the more the fragment it will be like in getting a good kind of hands on so we say del help dot fragment dot xml right and here i just simply copy paste that and uh, let's just add del let us del to each method so that we can distinguish it right and uh, Mm, key is uh, since this is more likely a range so let's just have it as a del status right and uh, description key is uh, whatever support ranges ranges only okay which is fine and uh, then let's just open our controller now here also you see there is a reference which it is getting now you will see how these default tokens work in a better way so for our case it is uh, in our the the id is del status so i go to my main controller and i say that this underscore let's let's keep it as multi input only name variable name and if you want you can change it so i just say that okay this is del status and tokens i don't want to set anything default so this uh, default value which you see coming is coming from basically uh using this method default tokens and get default tokens is here where it is hard coded right so we are not going to hard code this right now in our own value help requested right for us it is uh, we are added a del to it right if you uh, look here uh, where is my main a filter view i have added a del to it right so i will also add del here so i go to main and then i say mm -hmm. let me copy everything let, let's also copy this ok press cancel press these are our default method right so we say on value help get request del we have also modified in our fragment that we want this to be our del and let's have this O value help del as well as del just to distinguish between both the dialogues, right? So we'll have uh, this, this, and uh, close, close. I'm just trying to separate two dialogues because we have two dialogues. One is for business partner, other is for this. We will call it as delivery status. And key is let's just keep it as del status string maximum length is one right and uh, multi input get tokens this is all okay i think we are good right and i will just press save let's just see what error we get 
uh, okay very good so we have this and if I just press this I know what is the error the error is because this path is wrong this needs to be something like the view the value help dialog path is wrong so now I'm just correcting it to del help and uh, So let's see how it works now. So we have it and now if I click here, uh, what have we missed? Uncode type string is not defined. Okay. Yeah, this type string, type instance, this is type string is not defined. Okay. So what we have to do is we also have to add it as a dependency. Here is a dependency. This is where this class is defined. So I'll add it here, comma, and I will use type string. So because it is specifying some type that's why we need to use it and uh, we are using it here right so now if i go here and uh, this is okay for me and if i just go here and if i just click here we have it right now if you say you cannot you can say that it contains a and then you say it is equal to b right and then you say it is between a and c right and you can see this all coming and if you press ok this all are here so let me just quickly put a um, breakpoint to show you how it those tokens look like right so if you say here and if i go here and if i just modify these for the timing and i say okay so what it does is it gets an array right and these multi inputs all they need is a token and each token will contain this value so let's say if i just say read this a tokens i go to console and i say a tokens it has three instances and uh, a tokens dot two it will have our our uh, this property it is a range and it is from A to D. This is like this, right? And if you if you say token dot get key, it has this value, right? And it will automatically convert it into ranges and all. So so this is how we normally are using NAS search help. Uh, one is this one where we get it from the table, right? The O data one we get the data and then we select it you can of course add filters multiple selections using multi input that is your wish now once you have this right the last part of the puzzle is that how do we read it once i press go so that's what we will look at right now now let me now how do i read it because these are multiple values right so let me just find our uh, own search right and just click here go okay and if you remember this so this multi input reference is already in the class in here right and if i go here and if i just say write this this is what it has now what it contains is these all individuals are tokens the information that what is your search criteria right so how do we get that token is basically let me make it a bit bigger because i'm going to use this what i will do is i'll say get tokens right and you have those three tokens right now if you basically uh, if you basically let's say uh, let's let's say this is your first token right and uh, if you kind of uh, you will do as a dot uh, you'll have data right so you get a range right and range is it, it it contains that information you see it contains exclude is false key field is del status operation is contains value a so how do you read it is you say dot range and similarly if you want to have a flow one so it tells you operation is equal can you can you just uh, idealize it to a select option to compare to select option it is right it is nothing but a select option so that's how you give the ranges right and then you can do loop over and give the third one also the same way right and uh, 
then you can create your filter also by, uh, if you want to have something like a filter you can have those new filter and then you pass the field name right and then operator which in this case is operation right and then you have value one value two so so you can very easily put your filters and everything so i think now that now it makes more sense that you understand how these uh, um, different uh, uh, things are working right so let me just quickly stop here and uh, uh, bring in what all we have covered so far so i think we have covered a lot in this one so we um, let me make it a bit bigger yeah this is fine so we started with our basic filter bar and table right and uh, then i then we went through uh, what do we say to introduce introduce the concept of fragments right and uh, then we said uh, uh okay now we understand fragments which are nothing but reusable views uh, along with uh you know controller is the one which instantiate and uh, we pass it by our binding it right while calling and also remember it is very important to understand that we need to pass the view id also so that it basically kind of uh, uh, we are able to use the same this dot get dot view dot by id to read those fields and once we understood those xml view those um, fragments i said okay let's now move towards value help dialog right where we actually saw two versions one is for data integration with with es5 as table right and then uh, we always have ranges who doesn't have it right select options the report so that's where we also look at uh, ranges right and then uh, in debugging we showed you that um, you how do you read those ranges via token and important thing is that while doing this we also had a look at multi input where you can have multiple inputs right and uh, for example multiple criteria along with tokens so i think uh, this time we have integrated a, a complete uh, o data integration using yes how can we forget that our one and only uh, proxy also right so let me just quickly open that and here and we also use our middleware ui5 middleware simple proxy right so that's a bit about uh, our this project and uh, now in our next projects we'll try to learn something new bring in something more concepts and explore further controls till then keep watching keep sharing keep learning thank you thanks